This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on April the 4th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Yes, it, it, whether, it, whether it has enough memory and whether it's fast enough. Okay. I don't know what mine has. Well, what does yours have? Let's have a look. Okay. Oh, no. No, 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 sorry. You're in for new. I figured it must be different. Yep, you're in for new. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, my XP was only 32, so I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it had to be a new. Well, it, like I said, it all depends on the computer and and um, how you uh, and and how much horsepower it has. Now, uh, I'm going to show you on this computer how to how to find horsepower. You can find horsepower on your own simply by doing this. You can either go to um, Go to your Windows icon down here, whether it's Windows XP or whatever, okay? And when you find, yeah, when you find the, the My Computer icon, and it will be, open, except for Windows 10, you're not looking about it, but the My Computer icon will be here in a list, okay? You right click on it, um, okay? And I'm going to do it right here on the icon on the desktop. Yeah, same thing. Right click on it, the, the My Computer icon on your desktop, and go to Properties. When you right click, you'll get this menu. Okay, go to Properties, and it will open up a page that will tell you all about your computer. And what it's telling you, yeah, what it's telling you is what the operating system is. Okay, in your case, Windows XP. It'll t if it's if the computer is capable of telling you the next few things, it will. Um, in this case, um, I bought this computer from a uh, from a refurbisher, and um, and um, it's here. They're, they're all of their information is here. Um, it's um, also told me about their website. The same, if your computer was a Dell, it would it would put all the Dell information. If it was a Gateway, it'd be all the Gateway information. Okay. And um, how I have set the computer up, I've given it a name uh, and the description and all of that. And further down. Um, the activation, uh, whether Windows is activated or not, right here. Okay. Now, in uh, where you really want to be looking is under the system information. Yeah, in the system information, uh, under the processor, it's going to tell you how fast the processor is, what kind it is. On older computers, it's pr you're pretty much going to. Um, have uh, an indication that is what's called a P4, a P4 processor. P3, forget it, you can't do anything with it. If it's a P4, you might have a chance. If it's a P4 and it's relatively fast, now when I say fast, I mean anything between 2.5 and 3.1 in this number right here. The number of gigahertz that the the computer is capable of performing, the the, the number of calculations it can perform, um, and so if that number is above 2.5 up to 3.1 or 2, 
Yes, okay? The next thing is how much memory do you have? If you don't have enough, sorry, it will not work. The memory, the installed memory RAM, has to be two gigabytes or over. If you don't have two, you don't have enough. You can't buy enough because it is so expensive. Old RAM now is about four times the price of brand new RAM. If you can find it. It's so it's as scarce as hen's teeth. Well, why couldn't you use new RAM then? Because it's um, new RAM um, is a different configuration of how it fits into the slots, okay? The the slots are bigger, smaller, the the contact points are are narrower, smaller, all of that stuff. Old RAM has one configuration, new RAM has another, and you can't mix them. So um, if you don't have two gigabytes of RAM and you're below 2.5 gigahertz of um, processor power, forget it. It won't do it. Now, um, uh, Linda Moore asked me to do her computer um, last week, and I went to her house and I looked at it, and it, yes, it was Windows XP. But someone had put a copy of Windows XP on that computer, and it was a relatively new. It was an i3, a Core i3. It had like 6 gigs of RAM. It was 3.1 gigahertz fast. It could have run Windows 10 like that. I don't know why somebody put Windows XP on it for her, but somebody did. So I changed it over. Now, I bring that up to come into my next um, thought process here about Windows 10. Now, it says on my computer that um, Windows is activated with its software license is good. Okay, it's activated. Um, it was activated by Green Bike Computers. They, they are the ones that um, installed the operating system and put Windows 10 on it with an active uh, original equipment manufacturer key. Um, now, here's something really, really interesting about Windows 10. You don't have to activate it. How about that? You don't have to activate it. What it was doing was it was looking at your Windows 7 license key and saying if it's valid, then your upgrade to Windows 10 is valid. And your computer ever after that for a Windows 10 install will be valid because um, um, it sent some things about your computer to Microsoft, some very specific things about it, especially what's called a hash number. It's about 25 digits long, and it's unique to your computer. So if you ever have to reload Windows 10, the computer will resend that hash to Microsoft. Microsoft will look at it and say, oh, this has already been activated. You're fine. Activate now. Okay? So reinstalling Windows 10 on a broken computer, not a problem. That can be done. However, as I said before, Windows 10 does not have to be activated. Well, that presents some really interesting options. If you do not activate Windows 10, down in the lower right, down here, you will get, there will be a, um, uh, like a shadow image of some text that will um, say that, gee, you really should activate Windows now. Click here. And if you click there, it'll take you to the activation page and you'll buy your activation code. And Windows, Microsoft will be really happy that you paid $110, $119 for it. Um, and then everything will be copacetic. 
this I have learned means nothing. It just means that you have not activated Windows. Now what's the result of that? The result of that is that you cannot, if you haven't activated Windows, you can't personalize it. This copy of Windows I did nothing with. This, this is the original um, um, wallpaper for it. I, I liked it. I kept it. Um, when I go to settings, this is what I'm talking about. Personalize the background, the lock screens, the colors. Okay, this is what it all does for you. Uh, personalized. The, you know, this is a preview of the screen as it looks. This is what you can change it to. Um, the color options for your screen. You can you can change those colors if you like. You can make them more white. You can make them more red. Whatever you like. The the lock screen will um, uh, will have a picture on it. Um, really nice picture. Okay. Um, and that's part, here again, that's part of the personalization. You can't, you can change how a theme, a theme is just a package of these things of colors and backgrounds and lock screens and stuff like that. And the, the start menu um, will look as we have it now. If I click on the start menu, it will just, it'll look like that. Okay, you can't change it. I have not changed mine from the uh, preview screen. If you can't change any of this stuff in the personalization panel, who cares? I don't. I don't care. If that writing doesn't come up on your screen, it means that that you're you're. You can you can look uh, uh, under the properties under uh, under this PC. You go to the properties page and you look at the very bottom. And it'll it'll say that your Windows is active. That's why you don't have that down on the lower right. Yeah, I don't have it. Yeah, well, you're active. Okay, okay. Um, but if there is something there, that means that you're not active. Okay. okay, but with all of that said, and you load Windows 10 onto your computer and the it takes Windows 10 and it loads it up very nicely and you can attach to the internet and you can make all of the changes you want to Microsoft Edge okay you can make all the changes you want to it and you can make all the changes you want to um, Internet Explorer how that works and operates not a problem okay if it's not, if it's, Windows is not activated and you can do all this stuff, again, my question is, who cares? So, I will be looking into this further, but from everything I've read over the last couple of weeks, um, Microsoft is perfectly happy to let you use Windows 10 with some restrictions and they are very small like you can't personalize it but you can and I'll get into that in a minute you can there is a way around it uh, but um, why would you give them 120 bucks if they're gonna let you use it you're not doing anything illegal they said hey you can use it. Not a problem for me. And as a matter of fact, when you load Windows 10 on a, on a brand new blank computer, okay, all you have to do is there, when, you, when it comes time to put in the OEM key to activate Windows as you're going along, you can say skip this for now and it'll load the rest of Windows. <laughs> And with the proviso that you're going to go back and put your OEM key in. Well, you're not going to. Why would you? Okay. Um, now, I said that there was one way 
that you could do some, do some personalization of the screen if you want to. And that is when you set up your Windows box, um, I'm going to log out just quickly right here. and show you that uh, my login screen is, um, I have a Microsoft account, bobwillia at uh, gmail.com. That's my Microsoft account, that's the way I set it up. If it was just my name here, okay, I'm not logging in as a Microsoft account. But in this case, I am. My other computers on my desk also log in to the same Microsoft account. There's a reason for that. That I can synchronize these computers in Windows 10. I can synchronize them. So if I like what I have on my desktop in my office and I've got all kinds of things there that I think I should have on my laptop here, I can push a synchronize button and it will synchronize the two. They'll look exactly the same. They'll perform exactly the same. Well, gee, that works for a computer that doesn't have a Microsoft OEM software key. So I could take this computer that does not have a software key and I can synchronize it to my desktop and this computer will look exactly like my desktop. Okay, all of its fancy funnies. So there is a way to do it. But why bother? This is, you should be perfectly happy with this. Perfectly happy. Um, so I'm going to, in the next while for for whatever um, for whatever clients I'm going to recommend that if they're going to go to uh, Windows 10 and they want to do a a not an upgrade but a full-on load of Windows 10 I'm going to sort of recommend well why would you want to you can use Windows 10 without purchasing the OEM key. Okay? So does everybody that downloads Windows because they've had a previous version have it but it's not? There, there is, uh, I have uh, one client here in the village that has Windows 8. Not Windows 8.1. Yeah. Windows 8. Windows 8 is not eligible for the upgrade. Only Windows 8.1. Okay? I had, I had eight, but eventually eight upgraded to upgraded Windows eight point. 8 8, yes. Okay. Well, this this client has not done that. Yeah. Okay. So it's now long past the time that it could be done. Yeah. So now they're stuck with keeping Windows eight or buying Windows ten. Well, I've just found out you don't have to buy it. And if you don't buy it and you use it, you load it and you use it. What do you get back from Windows that it didn't have? A menu button. Okay? The most important thing about Windows is the damn menu button. When they took it away in Windows 8, wasn't everybody just a little upset? Yeah. Well, now it's back. So, there you go. Um, uh, for the life of me, I cannot see a downside. I cannot see a downside. Now, I will have to keep an eye on Linda Moore's computer for the next little while <laughs> to make sure that it's going to be okay. But from everything that I've read, everybody that has done this has had absolutely no problems. I didn't pay anything, but No, you, you, you're not going to pay because you upgraded from Windows 7. Okay, so Windows 7, uh, Windows 7 Home, um, Home Premium, Windows 7 Pro, 
um, where upgradable. Okay. Yeah. So you got uh, Windows 10 Home Premium. Um, if you had Pro, it would have upgraded to Pro. But beyond that, to you, you can't upgrade Windows Starter, which is another form of it, which is the lowest form. Windows Starter, Home Premium, Pro, Ultimate, and um, and Enterprise. Ultimate you can upgrade. Enterprise you can't. Okay, so that's um, now. I should tell you, I think I can tell you, I used to say about Windows XP that Windows XP was a great operating system and for, for the large part of its useful life, um, industry and business preferred to use Windows XP and they still do to this day if they can get away with it. The other people that used Windows XP almost exclusively were the Chinese because they could hack it. <laughs> the hacks to make Windows XP genuine were, they were everywhere, everywhere. And the Chinese were masters at it and they still are. Um, most of the computers in mainland China still run Windows XP. Now, the Chinese government likes that because it's real easy to keep an eye on their citizens in Windows XP. That's what they prefer to do. But that's neither here nor there to the case that um, China ran Windows XP on probably four OEM keys. <laughs> the whole country of China <laughs> ran Windows XP on probably four or five OEM keys that the Chinese just dumped into their computers, made them go. Um, that made an entire country criminals, if you think about it. But now they can all upgrade to Windows 10 if they want to. They don't have to buy an original equipment manufacturer key, an OEM key, for their operating system. They don't have to. And it's quite, quite legal. Now the Chinese government does have some problems with, uh, with Microsoft in that they don't fully understand the operating system yet. They will. And as long as they don't fully understand it, they're loath to, to have their citizens use it, um, whether they can have the same access to citizen computers and networks that they had before. Uh, probably they will. Probably they will. Um, still, Windows, Windows 10 um, has enough holes through in it that you can drive a truck through it. So that's an interesting little point about uh, Windows 10 is, is the, the rest of the world can use it um, and it's not illegal to use it. If it's not for them, why would it be for you? It's not going to stop working as far as I know. It's not going to stop working just because you haven't purchased the original equipment key for it. They've, they've put some these two restrictions on it and that's all. That it will nag you down here in the corner that you haven't purchased it yet, and that you cannot change the uh, personalization of the computer. You can hook it to your network, you can put a printer on it, you can, um, um, you can dual boot it onto um, an Apple box, an Apple machine, you can dual boot Apple software, excuse me, and uh, Windows software on the same machine. Um, there's no restriction there. Um, all of the software that I have ever looked at works just fine. There, there is no reason why it wouldn't work just fine in Windows. So any software that you've purchased, it's going to keep on working. 
have the uh, support of DVD there? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the the support of DVDs is usually um, in uh, third-party software that you can either um, download for free from the internet uh, from some of my favorite spots like Major Geeks. You can get. Um, And another thing is, I have Windows 7 Professional on my laptop. Yeah. If I download 10, will it? Yeah. It will upgrade to Professional, Windows 10 Professional. Is there any point? If you have it, why not have it? If you have it, why not have it? I just got the Yeah, yeah. You're going to keep getting that for from now until forever. Uh, there are no more upgrades. Um, and um, some of the software that uh, that you were using before, especially um, um, the Windows antivirus itself, um, um, Windows Defender will st also stop working in Windows XP. It, it won't work anymore. Um, but beyond that, for the life of me, I can't figure out why you wouldn't want to use it. Now, the, there is one caveat, yes, to be sure, and that is Microsoft Office. Uh, if you don't have a uh, an, an OEM key for uh, for Windows, uh, in all probability, you will not have an OEM key for Microsoft Office. Well, there's always a way around that, and that's called LibreOffice. So just take your Microsoft Office off the computer, put LibreOffice on it, you're away to the races. You're fine. It works just fine. My office works in a peer's old case. And yes. Downloaded tech. Yeah, yeah. It will work just fine. Um, any other questions or issues about um, having this new idea? of Windows 10 that you don't have to buy it. <laughs> but does it become vulnerable? I mean, it is no, no, it's, it's, it's getting its updates as, yeah. Yeah. it's getting its updates as any other uh, operating system would. They're updating it. They, they don't want you to be vulnerable. If you have uh, five computers on your network and one of them does not have an OEM key, they don't want the rest of your computers on your network to be vulnerable just because you can't update that one. So the updates come, they work. When you was looking earlier on at that page that for the systems in your computer. Yeah. What is this you keep seeing advertised Intel inside? Is that part of that? Oh, I I see I remember what you're saying here. So in uh in the properties yeah. page. Okay, Intel inside just means that it is running, uh, the, the motherboard is running what's called the Intel chipset. Yeah. So all of the chips were purchased from Intel to, to build the motherboard to build the computer. The other manufacturer that, that, is, that is big in the computer world is AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. And so it will say AMD inside. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, more advertising. That's fine. But um, in this day, early on in, in the days when you purchased your XP box, yes, there there was a difference in, between Intel chips and AMD chips. Uh, the difference was speed. And every year, Intel would bump the speed up and AMD would have to catch up. Then the next year, AMD would bump the speed up and Intel would have to catch up. And it was, it, it, it was a horse race all the way along for about 12 years. Um, it was, it became, after a while, it just became a numbers game because there was no advantage, no advantage beyond 2.90 gigahertz. There's no advantage no matter what the chipset. The computer will not perform amazingly more fast to its limit 
of 3.2, okay? Divide 3.2, or uh, I should say 2.9 into 3.2 to get a percentage, okay? Divide them and multiply 100. That gives you a percentage. The percentage difference is like 7%. And in the world of computers, in the world of chips, that's nothing, folks. That's nothing. There is, there's no advantage. None whatsoever. The real, the real workhorse in this, um, in this whole arrangement of chips is how much memory do you have, the installed memory. When you boot your computer up from being totally off to totally on, the computer will manage the programs that it's loading onto the computer to make it work. From the hard drive to the computer, it loads up the screen. You can see the screen, it loads up programs, so you can, you can manipulate the programs. In all probability, it's going to manage that task to be about 75% of what this number is. And in a 2 gigahertz computer, 75% of 2 gigahertz, or, or uh, I should, uh, gigabytes, I should say, not gigahertz, gigabytes, is about 1.75, okay? So it's going to load up three quarters of the available memory with programs. And it may be a whole lot less if you tell it how to do it properly. It's going to be a whole lot less. And so there's plenty of room left over for the computer to ma manipulate those programs and do as you want to do. To do your mail, to look at a web page, whatever. There's still room to go. In this case, um, it, with eight gigabytes of free memory, this computer, if it loaded everything, would only load three gigabytes. So you've got five gigs left over, it could load the operating system two and a half times. Okay, two and a half times it could load it. So now you've got really lots and lots and lots of room to manipulate programs, big programs. Big programs like Photoshop, which is huge. It's a great big thing. Um, iTunes, it's a great big program. Um, Microsoft Office, another big program. It's got plenty of room inside memory to load the whole program and make it run blazingly fast because it's got it all in the memory. So that's how computers run fast, is they use the available memory um, that if you've got a lot of it, they just load the whole thing into memory. And memory is a lot faster than a hard drive. Um, do you all remember a um, long time ago, James and I talked about um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, how a hard drive works and how memory works? Vaguely, okay? I, I will remind you by saying a hard drive relative to a memory stick is really, really slow. A hundred times slower than a memory stick. So. That means that if you have to move bits of the program off the hard drive into memory to make it work, and then you have to put that bit of memory back on the hard drive and load another bit, and when you're done with that, you take it, you take it out of the memory and you put it back on the hard drive, and it's constantly running back and forth. It's running at the speed of the hard drive, which is 100 times slower than memory. Okay. And that's where this, this, eight, this extra five gigabytes of memory comes in. It's loaded the whole computer. So it doesn't have to be constantly throwing pieces of the computer back in onto the hard drive to work. It's going to stay there and it's just going to work. A hundred times faster than your hard drive. Uh, if you have an old computer, your computer, if you listen to it carefully as it's running, you will, you will hear it clicking. And sometimes that clicking will, will be 
if you listen carefully, you'll hear it. That is the hard drive working its little heart out to show you something on the screen. <laughs> it's working its little heart out. Okay. Um, modern computers with lots of memory don't do that. They don't work that hard. Okay, any other questions? Uh, we got about a half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, oh yeah, the Intel, and I bought the Intel originally. As I remember, it was something to do with the fact that we could, could handle wireless. Uh, yes, uh, the wireless, uh, in the, this computer has uh, a wireless circuit inside of it so that I don't have to plug in my, uh, my Ethernet cable into it. It has wireless built in. That's part of the chipset of, uh, of a motherboard now. A motherboard has all kinds of things built into it that used to be you, have, you had to put a card, uh, a daughter card, on the motherboard to make it work. Um, for sure, you would have to put an Ethernet card in, okay, to plug this cable into the computer to get internet, okay. That was a separate card. Sound was a separate card. If you wanted to go wireless, that was a separate card. Um, if you wanted um, a graphics, the screen, if you wanted graphics to be a little more robust than what the computer itself was offering on the motherboard, another card. You would have about five of them eventually plugged in. And by the way, if you wanted extra hard drives, another card. <laughs> Okay, so um, you wound up uh, with a with a computer box about a box about that big, about that wide. Okay, um, just chock full of extras at a slight additional cost. So when you looked at the computer that you were going to buy in the store and it was eight hundred dollars when you got it home, it was twenty three hundred. Okay. Because all of these things had were extras. You wanted that faster Ethernet card, albeit that you were on dial-up. Um, you wanted that faster um, um, graphics card because you wanted to be able to play the games. Um, that's why you bought the computer to play the games. So um, all of those things over time are now built into this, okay, used to be, um, you will see google.com, don't touch it, just start typing, msn.com, hit apply, close it, the next time it opens, it will open with msn, okay. All right, it should be on the video <laughs> near the end. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's how you do that. Now, you're saying that um, what's happened here, um, is it's, it's opening the Google page, but here also is Google Chrome. Okay, now if you have, um, if you have put some internet short shortcuts on your desktop, yeah, some, yeah, 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 they 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 may very well turn up as Google Chrome um, shortcuts. I think they probably will because Google Chrome always wants to be your default browser. Well, it's not be. <laughs> well you can change that too. Okay. Uh, well, it's it's there's. Now be careful here. Understand what I'm saying. Okay. Um, this program is Internet Explorer. Okay. And it's going to the Google page. It's not going to the Chrome page. It's, here is Chrome. And it's going to the Google page. Okay. If you change that 
option as I showed you to change it in Internet Explorer, it will come up as MSN every time you click on it. But if you put that as a shortcut on your desktop and um, Google Chrome is your default browser, it will open MSN in the Chrome browser. So you always want to be opening your MSN with this icon here. Okay? And that's how to stay out of trouble. Can we actually... I mean, there was a day when Google didn't exist and we still got on the internet. Um, yes, and... Blow it and still live with it? Um, how you got to the internet before the advent of, uh, of search engines, okay. Um, early on, there were some, some ways to get to sort of start finding stuff on the internet, and uh, MSN was one way. Uh, there were others, like Alta Vista. Yeah, Bing, okay. yeah. oh, well, Bing was, was not even thought of then. Uh, but uh, MSN was a way to do it. These were called portals. And so when you opened Yahoo, okay, um, let's just open it. Um, well, you used to get a choice. Of yeah, you yeah. yeah. Well, um, Yahoo uh, is still a portal. Oops. Three page you requested. Oh, yeah, that's why. I spelled it wrong. Yahoo.com. Okay. This is still a portal. You can get to mail, you can get to sports and news and celebrities and lifestyles and movies and all of that stuff just by clicking one of these. And then when you get in there further, you can click something else inside of that, which will take you to something else related to movies, games, whatever. Okay, and that's how a portal works. And so um, you went through the the listings of what was inside the portal to find stuff. Unless you knew the actual universal resource locator, the URL for what you were looking for, unless you'd written it down somewhere or you'd saved it, you came across it by accident and saved it as a favorite, the universal resource locator, you had to know it to be able to type it into the address bar. Google did away with all of that. It, what Google said was, we're going to do away with portal pages altogether. You can go to them if you want, but we're going to make the internet searchable by these URLs. And what these URLs stand for is, what you're go is what's going to be in the background. Okay? Nobody knows here, well, you might be able to guess it, the, the URL for my website. Okay? If I tell it to you, yeah, you can put it in there. But in Google, um, if you were to start searching for computer repair, Hamilton, West Mountain, and my name, it would bring you a listing of my website. Okay? And you click on it and you're on my website. That's how Google works. It's not a portal. Is that the same then? I can remember when you had to write the www and it had to be exactly what you yes. wanted. Now you can write the first two letters and it offers you anything you want. Yeah, exactly so. Uh, that, that's how web pages have changed. And by the way, uh, it's not always necessary to put that www in. Okay? Because here you go. Uh, it's um, Yahoo has changed a little bit, but I could put in yahoo.com, just put in yahoo.com, and I, that's all I did, and it filled in the rest of it. Yeah. 
saying, okay, I know you want to go to a web page, and I, and I will just, uh, you, by the way, you, Yahoo doesn't need to have the dub dub dub. It can have it, but it does, doesn't need to. What it needs to have is the hypertext transfer protocol. So I put that in. Okay. All of that stuff in the early days of the internet had to be put in by hand and it had to be correct. Or you got lost. Or it wouldn't go where you wanted it to go. I mean, that's the nice thing about Google is it takes care of your mistakes. But. Yeah. Well, um, as we, you know, as, as the internet gets more and more complex, it's easier and easier and easier to make these mistakes. Um, I'm going to show you a little something here. Um, I hope no one gets offended by it, but I'm going to show you something. Um, years ago, when your children came home from school and they were, they had computers at home and they were on the internet and uh, the teacher had told them, would you please um, do an investigation of the latest goings on at NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration? Would you please uh, go and see what they've been up to as your homework for tonight and uh, either print something off or write something down for me for tomorrow? And so the kids and I don't know whether this is going to work. I haven't done it in a long time. You know what I'm about to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you would think that um, the universal resource locator for NASA would be NASA.com. Okay. 90% of the internet is .com. Okay. N-A-S-A dot com. Nope, they've taken it down. Hooray. <laughs> Used to be, if you did that, you saw a lot of nasty ladies taking their clothes off. Oh, there's my email. Well, of course, we tell them we've got it and we've lost it. Never time in Blackball, England. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> my friend yes. went, wow. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. But um, is it .gov? And it's .gov. Yeah. Okay, NASA.gov yeah. as government. Yeah. Okay, because the National Aer Aeronautics yeah. and Space Administration is part of the U.S. government, so it's .gov. Um, but that was done on purpose, okay? That NASA.com thing was done on purpose to have people go to that website and see nasty ladies taking their clothes off. They know they're nasty. <laughs> they might have been nice ladies. <laughs> they might have been nice. Okay, but you, you see where that, that kind of thing could get you into trouble and, uh, and especially um, get children into trouble when you started going back through the history on the, <laughs> on the computer of what was being looked at by your children and all of a sudden this stuff starts showing up, okay? So, were they at fault? No. It was done to them on purpose. So if you gave your kid a club, clubbed up the side of the head for doing that, okay, find them today and apologize because it wasn't their fault. They were tricked into it, as you are tricked into a lot of things on the internet, okay? All right, that's it, folks. That's uh, our time, 2 o'clock. I will get this up on the uh, website as quickly as I can. Bob, if, uh, if I want to go and uh, complain about that, Boot it up, like in our, our you go to the control panel. Yeah. And what would sort of 
be in control of starting it up? System? System? Oh, 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 okay. Um, so you want, you want to be in control of what the computer is starting? No, no, no. When no. it starts? What I wanted to do is boot up normal. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is, um, when I go to complain about it, okay, what should I put in? Um, just, okay. It's oh, because you have this service. That, I have the service thing yeah. there. I okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, you uh, your complaint will be, uh, computer takes one and a half to two hours to boot. Just boot? Yeah. Okay. There is something that you can do for yourself if you want to try. Okay. Okay. And that is you can go to, uh, no, you, you can click in your, uh, in your Cortana search box and you can do msconfig, msconfig, okay? And when you do that, you will get a panel of system configuration. And when you click on the startup panel and uh, open the task manager, which is where all this stuff is now, okay, you will see what's starting on your computer as it's booting up. You can disable everything in that list and see if it helps, and then turn them back on again one at a time. It's going to take you all day if you're on a two-hour boot. But write the list down, okay, and then disable them all and try and boot. If it has no effect, go back and turn them back on again. But uh, if it has an effect, now, what would be the program that is affecting this? Well, um, I have several programs here. The one that I can think of might be the NVIDIA video card. Okay? NVIDIA may be having trouble starting up. That's hardware. Okay? All of the rest of these are software. Um, but that's how you can start to do a bit of um, a bit of uh, investigation. investigation on. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Investigate, investigating on what might be wrong. But uh, computer won't boot for two hours. Is all you need to say because there's plenty of them there. I just didn't know how to word it. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, folks. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.